Hello all and welcome back. If you remember, in the previous video, I briefly spoke about grouping. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about grouping, ungrouping, outlining data in your worksheet using VBA Excel. Grouping involves combining one or more rows or columns in your worksheet. Now, one question which may come to your mind is, but why grouping? So grouping categorizes your data into groups so that you can display the relevant information and hide the ones which you may or may not show later on to your, let's say, boss or your client or whoever it is. It is also an efficient way to handle your data and quickly read and arrive at conclusions. So let's go ahead and let's understand grouping, ungrouping, outlining much more in detail. Here I have two worksheets which I will use to demonstrate how to group and ungroup cells. I will use these sheets to show you how grouping and ungrouping works and then I will show you how outlining works. Not only will I show you simple way to group a predefined range but later in the video I will also share how to group and ungroup dynamic data. Let's tackle grouping and ungrouping first. So here I have sales, let's say for a particular country. The data is segregated as per regions, employees and quarters. At a lower or middle management, they may want to see all this data, but on a very high level, they may just be interested in these figures only. So if I want to email this file to my boss, I can hide these rows and columns and then simply send this file. So for example, if I hide these from here to here, right, I'll hide this and then I will hide these. So now you can see only this much information. But now what if my boss wants to drill down on this data? He would have to send you an email again to ask you for the details. What if we could group the data so that if my boss wanted, then he or she could simply click on a plus button and this particular data expanded. Wouldn't that be nice? So let's learn how to group and ungroup data. If your boss is not aware of this, then this will definitely impress him. Let me press Ctrl Z to get my rows and columns back. Before we achieve this in VBA, let's first see how visually this will look like. I have given you a link in the description below. You can use that link to download this Excel file. So you can also practice this along with this video. Once you have opened the file, then come to the sheet data and here now select rows 4 to 23. Then go to the data tab. Under outline group, you will see something which is called group. Click on group. You will now notice that Excel adds these symbols, which I briefly spoke about in my previous video, subtotal feature and subtotal function in VBA Excel. These symbols are clickable, which means that you can click on this minus button to collapse the data and when you hide it the symbol changes to a plus sign which you can again click on to show sections of the data these plus sign and minus sign buttons are also known as outline symbols similarly now let's say i want to group columns from c to s so i'll repeat the process data outline group and this time if I go to the right and I click on the minus sign, the data will be collapsed. Similarly, if I collapse this, this is how my data will look like. Now you can send this file to your boss. And in case the boss wants to drill down on the data, he or she can simply click on these buttons. To remove these groupings, you can either highlight the entire range and then click on ungroup or you can simply click on clear outline which is under ungroup. So I'm going to select the entire worksheet because we have only this particular range and I'll go to outline and then I click on clear outline. And you will notice that the data has been ungrouped. 
Now let's achieve this using VBA. Let's launch the Visual Basic Editor by pressing the shortcut key Alt F11. If you're not sure what Visual Basic Editor is, then I recommend watching the video Visual Basic Editor and Introduction. Here I have four modules which we will use to demonstrate grouping, ungrouping and outline in detail. Let's open the first module which is this one. You can either double click on it or you can right click on it and click on view code. Here I have a procedure called group range. Here I have declared my worksheet variable which I am initializing to worksheet sheet 1. To group a range, simply specify the range.rows or range.columns.group method. Here I want to group rows 4 to 23 and here I want to group columns C to S just like we did manually and that's it. So let's run this and see if this groups the data like we saw earlier. To run this code, click on the run sub user form button or simply press the shortcut key F5. Let's go to the worksheet and there you go. The data is grouped and the outline symbols have been added. You can now simply collapse this data before sending this data to your boss. Now what if you want to do the collapsing by code so that you do not have to do that manually. For that we will use something which is called outline.showLevels method. This method displays the specified number of row and or column levels of an outline. The syntax is expression dot show levels, row levels, comma, column levels. Expression is a variable that represents an outline object. Row levels is an optional parameter which specifies the number of row levels of an outline to display. If the outline has fewer levels than the number specified, Microsoft Excel displays all the levels. If this argument is zero or omitted, then no action is taken on rows. Column levels is also an optional parameter which specifies the number of column levels of an outline to display. If the outline has fewer levels than the number specified, then Excel displays all the levels. If this argument is zero or is omitted, then no action is taken on columns. Here in this data, there are two levels, one and two. So whenever I click on one in the row section, it will hide the row data and if I click on one in the column section, it will hide the column data. Similarly, if I click on two, then the data will be shown. So for example, I click on two, you'll see how the data is shown. So now let's try and hide the data automatically after the grouping is applied. But first, let me clear the outlines manually. After that, I will show you how to do that via code. You may have a question that why do we need to clear it? The reason is, if we run this code without clearing previous groupings, then it will create an extra outline which will mimic the level 1 outline. Let's test this. I'm going to run this code again. So let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor and let me run this code again. So if I go back, you'll see that now we have three outlines. The first and the second one, they do the same thing. So if I click on one, it will hide it. If I click on three, it will unhide it. If I click on two, it will mimic one. And hence we clear out outlines before we apply the grouping. So I'm going to select all of this. I'll go to data, outline, clear outline. And we're done. Let's go back to the code. And now let me uncomment this line. Here I'm using the outline.showLevels method to tell VBA that I want to see only the relevant section in row and column data. So when I run this, what will happen is the grouping will be applied and the outlines will be collapsed. Let's run this. See the data is now hidden. To expand, simply change 
this row levels and column levels to 2 and then code will automatically show you that. So let's comment these two lines so it doesn't add any more groupings and I'm going to change this one to two. So when I run this, this should expand. Let's see. See how it expanded? Now let's see how we can ungroup the data. Ungrouping data is as simple as grouping data. Let's see the code in module two. Here I have a procedure called ungroup range. Here I have declared my worksheet variable which I am initializing to worksheet sheet 1. To ungroup a range, simply specify the range.rows or range.columns.ungroup method. Here I want to ungroup rows 4 to 23 and here I want to ungroup columns C to T like we did manually. And that's it. So let's run this and let's see if this ungroups the data like we saw earlier. See, it did. Now an important thing. Ungrouping rows or columns doesn't unhide the range. It simply ungroups. To understand this better, let's go to module 1 and let's get our grouping back. So I'm going to uncomment this. And let's run this. Let's check. Yes, the grouping is there. Let's hide it. Okay, now let's go to module 2. Now notice what happens when I run this code. If you go back to the worksheet, the grouping is removed, but the rows and columns which were hidden, they remain hidden. So we have two options here. Either we show all data and then ungroup, or we clear the outline using range.clearOutline method. Let's see how both of them work. Let's go back and check out the code in show all and ungroup data procedure, which is this. In this section, I'm declaring my worksheet variable and initializing it to worksheet sheet one. Here I'm using the outline.show levels to expand the data. And then finally I'm ungrouping. So for this to work, let's go back and again create this. Okay, let's hide this. Now when I will run this, what this will do is because of row levels 2 and column levels 2, the data will be shown and then the ungrouping will happen like we did in the above module. So let's run this. If you go back, you'll see that the groupings have been removed. Also, another thing, the range.ungroup method will give you an error if there is no grouping present. For example, right now, you can see that there's no grouping here. So if I go back and if I run this code again, see what happens. I get an error. And if I click on debug, it highlights this line. So remember that the range.ungroup method will give you an error if there is no grouping present. Let's stop the code. Now let's check out the code in the third procedure, which is clear outline method. In this section, I'm declaring my worksheet variable and initializing it to worksheet sheet one as I did in the above two procedures. And here I'm using the range.clearOutline method to clear the outlines. Okay, so I will go back again and I will again create the outlines. So if I go back, it's there, perfect. I'll again hide the data. And now I'm going to run the third procedure. And you will notice again the outlines have been removed. Also, the hidden data is now visible. Just like we use dot clear outline on a specified range, you can also clear outlines from the entire worksheet by simply using cell dot clear outline. So if you uncomment this and if you run this, then all the outlines in the currently active worksheet will be removed. Now let's do a quick comparison between ungrouping and clear outline. When you use ungroup on a hidden data, then the data is not made visible, which means ungrouping does not unhide the data. 
whereas a clear outline unhides the data as well. In case you want to unhide data when using ungroup, then you need to combine it with dot show levels method. Whereas in the case of clear outline, you do not need to take this extra step because it already unhides the data. When you use ungroup on a data which does not have any groups, then you will get an error. However, when you use clear outline on a data which does not have any groups or any outlines, it will not give you any error. Let's now take our grouping and ungrouping to the next level. Till now we were using hard-coded ranges. Now let's create a code which will work with dynamic ranges. Let's go to the worksheet for a moment. Here we have four employees per zone. What if different zones have different number of employees? Then how do we apply the grouping? Let me show you what I mean. Let's go to sheet 2. Here we have different number of employees in every zone. For example, the east zone has 7 employees. The south zone has 5 employees. West has 2 and north has 1. Before we write our VBA code, let's get the basic coding logic in place. The logic which I'm going to share with you is for this data. If you have your own data, then feel free to change the logic as per your data. So the logic is, first, clear any existing outlines. Second, your data starts from row 4, so we have a starting point. The next thing that we would want is to find the last row. The fourth is to use a reverse loop to check if the cell contains the word sales in it. In your case, you may want to have a different qualifier. The fifth thing is that we'll create the range using union method. And finally, we will apply the grouping on that range. So this is the basic logic. Now let's check out the code in module 3. In this section, I'm declaring my worksheet variable and initializing it to worksheet sheet 2. Here I have variables for start and last row. I've defined two more variables, one for looping and one for range. Here I'm removing any outlines if there are any. Here I've initialized my start row. And here I'm trying to find my last row. Here I'm looping through the rows using a reverse loop. If you're not sure how looping works, then I recommend watching the video Understanding 5 Loops in Microsoft Excel 365 for Windows. Here I'm using the instring function to check if the value in cell B contains the word sales. I've covered about the instring function in my video 10 commonly used string functions in Microsoft Excel 365 for Windows. If the cell doesn't contain the word sales, then I start constructing my range. Here I'm using union to merge the ranges. Here I'm finally applying the grouping to the range and then setting it to nothing so that it can get reinitialized here. In this section, I'm finally applying the grouping to the top section. I have to do this so that when the code reaches start row, it will simply exit the loop without executing this part. And here I'm checking if i is equal to start row and the range is not nothing, which means it is initialized to a range. Now let's run this. If you go to the worksheet, we see that the grouping has been applied. In my data, since I'm working with quarters, the number of columns is fixed. In case you have data where the columns are continuously expanding, then you'll have to apply the very same logic there as well. It goes unsaid that the logic will obviously be different in your case, but the approach will be somewhat similar. Now let's understand what Excel's auto-outline feature is. This is a very useful but neglected feature. Auto-outline allows you to hide details, showing only the header and summarizing rows or columns. This means your data needs to be structured in a specific way, be it having headers or specific columns in a specific sequence. 
Just like I mentioned in my previous video, the best way to work with these features is to club similar data together. For example, we have clubbed the data here as per regions and quarters. To apply the auto outline, we will use the range.auto outline method. This method automatically creates an outline for the specified range. If the range is a single cell, Microsoft Excel creates an outline for the entire worksheet. The new outline replaces any existing outline. The syntax is expression.auto outline. Expression is a variable that represents a range object. Now let's go to module 4 to understand how this works. In this section, I'm declaring my worksheet variable and initializing it to worksheet shape 2. Here I'm using the range.auto outline method to apply the outline to my range B2 to T24. Now let's run this. And let's go back to the worksheet. And now my data has outlines. See how intelligently it applied the outlines to my headers. So now I can hide whatever section I do not want to display. For example, I can now hide data as per individual quarters or regions. Let's go back to the code for a moment. Here we used a hard-coded range. What if your data expands in both directions? For example, vertically and horizontally. In such a case, we will have to find the last row and the last column and then construct our range to finally apply the outline. Let's check out the next procedure, auto outline dynamic data. Here I have declared five variables, four for my start and end row and columns and one for the dynamic range. Here I'm initializing the start row and column to two because my data is starting from row two and column two. So let me remove the outlines. So now we can clearly see that the data is starting from row 2 and column 2. Let's go back. Here I'm using dot find to find the last row and last column. If you're not sure how dot find works, then I recommend watching the video read data from a worksheet and display in user form. Here I'm initializing my range. This is my start cell. And this is the last cell. And here I'm applying the auto outline to the final range. Let's run this. And if you go back, you will notice that we get the same result that we had with hard coded ranges. So this is how range.outline works. Time for a quick recap. In this video, we understood about grouping and ungrouping and also how to apply it from VB Excel. We also understood about outlines and the outline symbols. So I hope this video was easy to understand. But if you still have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Or as usual, you can also email me on support at amexcel.com. I also have a Facebook page. The link is in the description below. Feel free to join that. And if you have any questions, please post it there. I'll be more than happy to answer your queries. If you like the kind of content that I'm putting up on the channel, and if you would like to extend support towards this channel, then watch a couple of videos, drop a couple of likes. And if you're really serious about learning Visual Basic Programming from scratch, then see the playlist, because that is where I have arranged videos in a particular sequence. So watch them, drop a couple of likes there as well. And if you're still not subscribed to this channel, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel by clicking on the bell icon. And in the next video, I will talk to you about different options available in the page setup group. These will help us set up layout and print options of our worksheet so that we can go ahead and print data in our worksheet or the entire Excel work.